Hey YouTubers, it's Charlie. This is going to be my Arrow Season 4 Mr. Terrific video. The show has cast Michael Holt, so I'm going to explain his history in the comics and how the show might adapt him. They're probably going to change a few minor things. This is going to be something of an origin story for his character. Just like the show is, is kind of a prequel for Justice League in terms of Oliver's level of development, it, it's the same thing for all the other comic book characters that they bring on. With like the one exception maybe being Vandal Savage, just because he's immortal. So he, he became like the Vandal Savage he is today a long, long time ago. So Mr. Terrific, most of you guys are probably at least a little bit familiar with the character. You may have seen him in the animated TV shows, you may have seen him in the comics. He, he's been in both Justice League and Justice Society of America. Mostly Justice Society. And he's actually, he's actually the second person to be named Mr. Terrific. Michael Holt, like the, the character that, that we're going to be seeing as Mr. Terrific, only took the name in the comics after he met the Spectre, and the Spectre told him about the life story of Terry Sloan, the first Mr. Terrific. Michael Holt became so inspired that he took the name as his own. The jacket that he wears with fair play on the sleeves is an homage to the Terry Sloan character. The story behind fair play is that Terry Sloan in the, in the Golden Age comics, he was, he was like the Golden Age Mr. Terrific, he created the Fair Play Club to combat juvenile delinquency. As in, you should play fairly. So modern Mr. Terrific wears that as an homage, and it's kind of a meta thing because, it, you know, he fights villains all the time. Play fair villains, come on. Arrow as a show does a really good job of turning things like this into Easter eggs with turns of phrase, or like, you know, like an offhanded joke. So don't be surprised if you hear Michael Holt on the show or Felicity, because he, a lot of his scenes are going to be with Felicity, make a fair play joke. But I'm not expecting him to roll into Arrow Season 4 wearing a jacket that says fair play. Even though Arrow has started to embrace magic and a lot of other outlandish things, they still try to stay pretty practical. It's still something of a crime drama show. If you're not familiar with his powers, he essentially he has the ability to learn very fast. He can pick up new skills on a dime, like he'll learn really complicated surgery, he can learn machines, really any, any complex idea that he thinks about, he just automatically absorbs. He does possess like a certain level of, of technological cloaking, like he, he calls himself invisible to all technology. And the mask that he wears, the, the tea on his face, is that they're actually nanites bonded to his skin that are part of the costume, but also aid in cloaking him. His signature technology are the T-spheres, so I'm, I'm hoping that they let him create those on Arrow over the course of the season. The Atom got to build his suit, and he got to shrink by the season finale, so Mr. Terrific probably going to make the T-spheres sometime during the year. They're basically just like small robots that aid him. They have their own weaponry, defense systems, and they can carry him around. Like he can fly using them. They, they bear his weight. So they're kind of like a bunch of Swiss Army robots. On top of all that stuff, he's also a gold medal winning Olympic decathlete. But remember, he learns things almost instantly. And, and that includes physical things that he learns. So he's also a really badass martial artist. The way he describes it in the comics is that he has a natural aptitude for natural aptitudes. So I'm really excited to see Arrow play with that. Like, if he's going to be working with Felicity at Palmer Tech, then expect him to out Felicity Felicity, because that's kind of Felicity's deal, being like the smartest person in the room. He did have his own solo title in the New 52 universe for a little while, but, but it didn't sell very well, so DC canceled it. If you want to read like a really good Mr. Terrific storyline, ju just start with the New 52 stuff. They've already collected most of it in trade paperbacks. It's called Mr. Terrific Mind Games. Some of the really good deep cuts, though, are JLA, JSA, Secret Files and Origins, number one. He goes to the Batcave using, using a pretense, but he really wants to talk to Batman about his grief in, in losing his wife and child. The TV show is turning him into an LGBT character, so I don't know how they're going to deal with his wife and child from the comics. In the continuity of the TV show, he may have just had someone really close to him die, like a boyfriend or a husband or a brother or sister. He did have a mentally challenged older brother in the comics that died when he was 15, so they might use that as proxy for his grief. I'm not expecting the show to deal with the religious aspects of the character. Like, like a big part of his character in the comics, you know, for better or worse, is that he's an atheist, despite the fact that the Spectre is responsible for him taking the name Mr. Terrific. The Spectre is literally God's spirit of vengeance. So if God exists, then how can you be an atheist? So, so it's like, it's a big contradiction. I, I think Arrow is just going to sidestep that. And remember, there are a bunch of new characters coming onto Arrow this season. I'm expecting to see Michael Holt about as much as we saw Ray Palmer during Arrow Season 3. And yes, the, the Atom is going to be part of Arrow Season 4. Like, we'll probably see him in the premiere. They have to follow up on what happened to him in the finale. I know people were a little confused as to what happened. He just, he shrunk down accidentally. He, did, he didn't know what happened. So he might be teeny tiny in Episode 1. But for the most part, Ray Palmer is going to Legends of Tomorrow. 
the Legends characters will appear on the Flash and Arrow during the first half of the season. They'll, they'll set them up for the spinoff, but not as much as we saw in season four, probably. Most of the first half of the season is going to be dedicated to introducing the new characters, like Damian Dark, Anarchy, who's also, who's also one of the new villains. They also just announced Baron Blitzkrieg is coming on the show. He's going to be a flashback villain, though. If you're not familiar with him, he's a Vandal Savage collaborator from, from way, way back in the comics, so I think that they're going to change his character a lot for the show. Do not expect a whole lot of Nazi stuff on Arrow. Hail Hydra. Here's my big question for you guys. What are you hoping to see from Mr. Terrific on Arrow, considering most of his scenes will be with Felicity? I feel like everyone just wants to see T-Spheres and the T on the face. I, I don't think we'll get the T on the face. Definitely T-Spheres, though. It would be criminal for them not to do that. From a CG perspective, you know, if they can do Gorilla Grodd, I feel like T-Spheres would be pretty easy. They did say at Comic-Con that he would be joining the show in episode two, so we, we won't have to wait long to meet him. I guess that means Oliver and Felicity's vacation or whatever they've been doing for the last couple of months is going to be over by episode two, because if, if Felicity is going to be working with him and we're, and we're going to meet him, then she'll have to be back in the city somewhere. The actor that they cast is Echo Kellum. I'm not super familiar with a, with a lot of his work, but he's a comedian. He's done stuff with the Groundlings, Upright Citizens Brigade. So we'll see. I, I feel like they cast him to fit with Felicity's tone. You know, she's just a lot of the comedy on the show flows from her. So it makes sense that they would try to cast a comedian in the role. Somebody who can do the superhero drama stuff, but can also riff on a dime. I feel like sometimes some of the best actors come from comedy backgrounds because they're so good at improvisation. Stephen Amell has actually said that working with John Barrowman has really like opened his mind from an acting perspective, just, just because John Barrowman has such like a broad background. A good example of that on The Flash is Tom Cavanaugh. Like, like he's probably like the best actor on The Flash, which is why he's probably going to be the villain again. It just feels right that the best actor on a superhero show gets to be the villain, just because villains tend to be the most complicated characters. You guys can let me know if you agree, but like, look at the Avengers, for instance. Like, who do you think is the best actor? Do you feel like Tom Hiddleston is like the best actor from that group of people? Maybe not the best leading man, but I do, I do feel like he could act circles around Chris Hemsworth. Speaking of villains, though, I just did a Gotham video about a bunch of the new villains that they're bringing on. It's going to be like the rise of the villains, although Michael Chiklis is the answer to that. He's going to be the new police captain on Gotham Season 2. Give me all of your Gotham clobber and time jokes. I think for my next video, I might do a Suicide Squad Jason Todd video and, and just do like a history of all the Robins in the comics. Off the top of my head, I think there's like 11 or 12 different Robins from the comics. So be sure to subscribe to get everything. If there's any like Arrow or Flash bonus videos that you guys want, just let me know in the comments. Just in case you guys haven't seen it yet, you can click here for that Gotham Season 2 preview. And you can click here to learn all about the Flash Season 2 and the, some of the upgrades they're making to the suit. Thank you so much for watching. Everybody, let's high five. I'll see you guys tonight.